Genocide in Kashmir Valley. The mayhem goes on relentlessly. By Imran Najib Butt. Kashmir has been turned into the largest jail in the world for the last 35 days. India is paralleling the plans of its friend in crime, Israel, in Gaza and the West Bank. Occupy, divide, depopulate, and rule. India has planned to turn the demographies of Jammu and Kashmir in its favor. Jammu will be separated from Kashmir, and Ladakh, which already has a low Muslim population, will be turned into a Hindu state. Jammu and Kashmir will be injected with new Hindu settlements. Muslim populations will be decreased by all means, either genocide or migration into Pakistan. In the matter of time, Jammu and Kashmir will be ruled by Hindu chief ministers. The sun of Hindu rulers in the Kashmir will rise once again. At least that is the plan. This is not the first time Kashmir is under attack by Hindutva forces. It has already happened back in 1947. Massacre of Kashmiris in 1947 is always hidden and forcefully forgotten by the Indian government. Even in Pakistan, not many people know about it. It's not even taught in schools, which is a disgrace to our education system. Almost 200,000 Kashmiri Muslims lost their lives when Maharaja Hari Singh ordered his Dagra army to kill and force Muslims to leave the valley. It was the first and largest execution of Hindutva ideology and its plans to eliminate Muslims from the face of Kashmir Valley, to make it a pure Hindu state. The RSS members were invited to quench their thirst with Muslim blood. Even army regiments were brought into the valley from Punjab. For two months, the game of Holly was played with the blood of Muslims, which turned the Green Valley into red. Many were successful in reaching the western part of Kashmir, which is now Assad Kashmir and Sialko. The armies used to fill up the trucks with Kashmiris to bring them to Sialkot, but instead they used to take them to the jungles of the Rajori district of Jammu, where they were slaughtered. In response to that, Pashtun tribesmen of Pakistan started moving to Kashmir to save their Muslim brothers and sisters, who were victims of savage forces. The Dagra army retreated, and some parts of Kashmir were freed, forming Assad Jammu and Kashmir, which joined Pakistan. In 1991, the Indian army started genocide of innocent Kashmiris once again for their greedy plan to make Kashmir part of India once and for all. Kashmiris resisted, but the Indian oppression into the valley grew stronger with fresh army deployment and military arms. Kashmiris could not resist and lost over 100,000 lives till today. RSS claims to provide 6 million members of its poisonous organization to fight Muslims in Pakistan within three days. They already have well-trained terrorist militia, both men and women, writhing with rage in thousands of RSS boroughs across India. Thousands of protesting Kashmiris have been injured due to the curfew and clashes with Indian occupational forces in the last 25 days. Bullets, pellet guns, and tear gas have become part of their daily life. It's a do-or-die situation for Kashmiris, as there is a deliberate attempt to destroy local businesses and basic human rights are being crushed under brutal army boots. The serious concern for the parents is the abduction of hundreds of teenage boys from houses. There's an extreme shortage of food, medicines, and other basic necessities in the valley. Over 20,000 Kashmiris, including hundreds of political leaders and workers, are under strict house arrest, while thousands of others are in jail, and many missing. According to sources, death certificates of those losing their lives in clashes and raids under the cover of dark nights are not being issued. Doctors are instructed to do so by Indian troops to keep the record clear. Large-scale protests are being held across Kashmir every day despite the enforced curfew. According to the reports, Indian troops enter into an area at a time and damage the properties in the surroundings, trashing vehicles and breaking windows of the homes with stones. Then they shoot tear gas canisters into the homes, forcing the residents to come out to protest. When people rush out of the fuming houses, occupational forces rain the bullets, pellets, and even more tear gas upon them. As a result, many lose their lives because of inhaling tear gas, while many lose their eyes and limbs. Doctors refuse to treat any patient injured during the protest, or discharge them instantly to keep the statistics low. The Indian Army is writing a new history of cruelty and brutality by its provocative tactics. Force them to fight and kill. Indian oppression is at its highest peak at the moment. People are facing malnutrition which is leading them to hunger and eventually will reach famine. They are bound to come out and become prey to the giant ferocious anaconda, waiting with anticipation to feast on the innocent Kashmiri lives. All that is happening while we are breathing in the 21st century. We know all about that is occurring on the other side of the world. Forest fires in the Amazon rainforest, for instance. But a whole state, that of Jammu and Kashmir, is under dark evil oppression since August 5th. Not many seem to know. Many days have passed and many will pass. The time never stops. History only remembers those who speak out and take actions. 
in their own capacity to save the weak from the jaws of the brute. Those who support and stand with the truth in the time of polarization and selfishness all around. Not just the governments and leaders of the world, but every individual living and walking on the surface of the earth needs to speak out loud so that the barbarous forces can know that Kashmir is not left alone and that humanity is still alive within the residents of the world. Are you the one?